Hey everybody, Economic Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. I'm gonna do a rant video. We're gonna talk about banks and why you need to really consider how much money you're leaving in those banks and how much you should uh, take out to save yourself. None of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. This is a dude with a brohawk and a, and a dream. Point being is my goal here is to save you from, sometimes we have to save each other from ourselves, but really it's saving ourselves from a system of debt and death, a system that is imploding on itself right now. It is absolutely remarkable watching this. And yes, it is like a slow train wreck. For some of you that are like, oh, I've been getting ready for this for 10 years or 20 years, a uh, broken clocks, right only twice. Well, you, you were right, but the problem is when it's right, it's only right for a second. And what I mean by that is an event can happen so fast and so furious. And I have lots of stories about videos, you know, when I was getting ready for the, the dot-com crash, but really it was the real estate crash. You know, I was ready for it, but I was shocked at when it started, how fast it really took off. And it's like catching a falling knife, right? Well, this is why I'm out here doing this little rant video. I went to pull up to my bank and right now it's 9.45. And it sounds funny because the ninja sometimes, you know, I, I think logically. And I, when, you, when you think logically, and all my subscribers are amazing human beings all around the world uh, that think logically, like, oh, things, are fun. things don't seem right. Things can't stay together for very long, I'm going to do something about it. And I'm going to succeed because I'm going to be prepared and not scared. And then I'm going to capitalize on the craziness, right? So my logic sometimes gets the best of me because that's not how the world works, right? This is an illogical world. That is why it is collapsing. You can stay illogical only for so long until the stupid train all of a sudden runs out of track and then it falls off the cliff. That's where we're at. Stupid train. Hashtag stupid train in the video. So I pull up. It's 945. I got business to do. I'm a businessman. I own a handful of businesses. I still have a full-time career. Um, and hey, I got a YouTube channel with you guys. Awesome people. I pull up, 9.45, I got business to do. Bank's closed. Now I get it. Since the whole world sh decided to shut down in uh, 2020, everyone got away with all kinds of stuff. But now, as of right now, right now, hopefully uh, it stays longer, but I don't think it will as we go into another season of this craziness. The banks go, Psh, we don't gotta be open. You know, you've always heard bankers hours, right? Now you got banks that are like, nah, we don't need to open until 10. And then, you know what, let's close earlier too, right? Because they're forcing into a digital system, a digital age. And they're slowly, through their bank fees and making things more and more difficult, and like holding your funds. I, I mean, I've, I've, I've literally even deposited a cashier's check and they say, oh, we're gonna hold funds on this. What the heck is your problem? The only way you can, if you don't want us holding funds, you need that money right away, you gotta wire it. So I'm like, oh, score. So I get to spend like $50 plus incoming wire fees, outgoing, all that crap, just to be able to use my money in a timely manner. It's almost like dealing with Coinbase. You guys know how I feel about Coinbase. So now you're not only charging me up the wazoo, you're literally now like hampering the amount of hours that I can do business. That is not gonna fly. And this is why it's very important to start really realizing where you're at in this society. And if you need money, well, maybe a bank isn't the proper way to go. Maybe you need to start literally thinking about, you know, I'll give you an example. I vault gold, right? A lot of people are like, oh, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. I get it. I agree with you. But you get to a certain point, and I have one of my corporations, we, um, we take all of our free cash, and I do just like Elon Musk and Tesla does. I store gold, right? So I have a certain amount of our treasury is vaulted. If I need it, it is there and back in my account in less than 24 hours, right? I can't even say that about my local banks. And I've got six of them, just, you know, all kinds of different. Because why? Logically, just like when we see bank failures, they don't all fail, right? So I'm spread out. My risk is spread out between, you know, regional banks, large banks, national banks, and then obviously um, uh, your local credit unions, right? So I have my risk spread out there too. But then I have to go even a next step, and that's the logical part. I'm going to vault gold. So because I'm afraid of a, a dollar falling in value, and I, I believe that as the dollar falls in value, and yes, we're topping that little, you know, my, as my uh, buddy Crypto Church Joe says, you know, a, literally a pattern, a resistance pattern line that goes all the way back to 1999. And, and, and I want you to realize since 1999, and I, I'm going to say this really slowly, some, some people didn't hear this. They heard the, the word Great Depression. Since 1999, the Dow Jones has fallen by 50% twice. Once after the dot-com boom and bust, and including 9-11, the second time, during the Great Recession. It's fallen 50%. That's crazy, right? But hey, this time's different. Yeah, this time's different. I can't even get into my bank until 10 a.m. So I'm here, I'm with you guys. So at least I get to blow off some steam with an amazing group of people. 
So my point being is that it's very important to think about it in these times where our money is. You know, do we have it in physical form, in cash for an emergency? Do we have uh, gold and silver as a hedge against inflation and uncertainty? Do we also have, you know, certain amounts of like, like I'm doing like with my one company, we're vaulting gold with a certain amount of our percentage of our treasury because I need it first off liquid and I, again, against a falling dollar, right? I believe that it's going to produce a better gain than my dollars, right? So we have to hit it from a multi-prong approach and, and understand that banks are absolutely failing you right now. And I'm, I can't be more clear than that. They are failing you. They are I don't even know like the right word to say because the computer's like, what do you say? What are you going to say? Because we're not going to push it out to the people. There's too much truth there. Um, they are taking advantage of you through fees, through wasting your time. And, and oh yeah, and they're recording all of your transactions. That's, that's always another positive too. That's is absolutely insanity to me. So guys, do me a favor, throw down in the, hash, in the comments, flood this thing with awesome hashtags like hashtag inflation, hashtag banking, Hashtag banks, like let's get this moving, but like tell me your scenarios. Like, have you shown up? Like I showed you uh, when I went to my Chase Bank account because I, I do business in different states with one company. So we picked Chase because the way their, their functionality works with their, their interface, their, their online platform, I liked it, right? But hey, I show up and there's not enough employees. So they close that branch. I'm like, oh, you gotta drive down two towns to go to that branch. See, I'm used to doing business in person. I wanna look the people in the eye that I'm doing business with, that I'm dealing with. I like that. I don't want a robot taking over my banker's jobs. I don't, even if I don't like bankers. But these people, the people that work at banks, they don't know if this is all happening. They're clueless. I remember going in, you know, when Bitcoin was like 3,000 bucks and, and they're like, oh, you're gonna buy more Bitcoin. They have no clue what's going on. Now they go, you buy more Bitcoin. <laughs> it's a totally different story, but it's the same thing. You know, they don't understand what's going on and I don't want them to lose their job just as much as I don't want someone at McDonald's losing their job. I don't need to order my burger from a, uh, uh, a robot. And now get ready for the comments. You shouldn't be you know, ordering McDonald's. Yeah, I get it. Copy. I like McDonald's hamburgers. I don't know what to tell you. Look at me. I'm getting ready for uh, the Jeff Borgen diet. And that's coming too. I don't want my, uh, my local grocers losing jobs to a robot I don't go in those aisles that, you know, the self-checkout stand. No, I go wait in line. They're like, but sir, but sir, there's, there's four. And, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, copy. That's taking your jobs. I'm going to wait over here. But sir, and I'm like, I know. Just, just get big picture. Let's come back, snap back into reality. And they go, oh, it's a good thing that you're not in this line for the robot to take your, okay, thank you so much. Like have that conversation with everyone you can. And I'm calling out for banks to open up normally now. Let's, I, I get more done before 8 a.m. than most people get done all day. Unless I guess they're playing video games. I don't even get that done. So that's one thing I can tell you doesn't. And I get it, there's gonna be comments. But Ninja, that's my downtime. I get it, we all need it. Just limit the downtime. Let's go crush it, guys. We're here to make some money. We're about to get wealthy. Why? Because we're prepared and not scared. All right, guys, that being said, I thank you so much. I think the doors just opened. I'm gonna go get my money, woo! I get to go get my money. Think about that, guys, when all of a sudden you need some money. Get ready for this. Banking collapse is happening. It's happening right before our eyes. All right, Economic Ninja is out.